What's up guys and welcome to my humble abode. Um, so this is my apartment. We just had a housewarming the other day, Danielle and I. We will be doing an updated home tour for our new apartment. It's up, raring to go, and we'd love to share that feed with you. But for now, it's just me kind of giving you a rundown of um, basically how I start my day. We're not gonna go through my whole day or anything like that. Uh, it has to do with watering or checking for water for plants that need water because we have a ton of vegetation in our apartment uh, of course walking the dogs which i've already done and today there's the added bonus of having to prep for a video shoot that we're doing tonight uh, it's actually for the building that we live in we're having a um, get together that's put on together by the property manager and it's going to include a bunch of our neighbors so we're going to be able to, to meet um, uh, a lot of our neighbors, and many of them we haven't met, honestly. Uh, we've been here for a year, but a lot of people have come and go in that time, and there's a handful of new tenants that we haven't met. So, without further ado, uh, let me go show you guys what goes into uh, taking care of our indoor nursery. All right, so the first thing we do is we move all our succulents um, that are placed strategically throughout the house um, as decor. We put them on the windowsill so they can get sun. Um, we have a really dark hallway where we have a ton of succulents um, set up on wall shelves and it makes a beautiful, beautiful um, addition to the entryway. Um, it's one of our favorite parts of the house. But the problem is we don't get enough light over there. So what we do is we move all of them uh, during the day uh, from the morning, you know, at, at least put them on here for about four to six hours. And uh, of course, while we're doing this, we're also checking to see if the soil is dry. Succulents thrive in, um, uh, in drought weather, drought conditions, so it's okay. Uh, some of them prefer that they dry out before you water them thoroughly. So uh, that's what we do. Uh, I check for ones that are dry and water them, and ones that are still moist, I leave them alone. Uh, you want to do this particularly for the aloe plants. They do not like being overwatered and they love, 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 love to dry out completely before you water them again. Just don't neglect them for too long of a period. They will eventually die without some water. Over here, you can see our Norfolk pine. Now for this one, uh, it likes lots of sun all the time. That's why it's here near the window. Also likes to dry out, however, it loves to be misted because it loves, likes high humidity. So I just missed it. Give it a good misting. And uh, this will prevent the leaves, the tips of the leaves from turning brown or drying out. Um, it really, really needs this. All right, moving on. So as you can see uh, over here, we have more rest succulents. Again, these are the ones that have been moved from the darker areas of the house. I've already checked to make sure that uh, they're properly watered. While I'm over here is for the orchid, actually. Uh, typically, these succulents are not here, and it's just the orchid uh, enjoying the window. Now, orchids are, I think, uh, the most finicky plant that we have in here. It needs the right amount of sun. It needs the right amount of water. Um, sometimes you have to fertilize it, um, feed it. Uh, you don't have to feed the succulents. You can if you want to, but I don't ever intend on feeding our succulents. Um, or even for the most part repotting them. Uh, they're met for decoration and the, they're the perfect size and shape um, for where they are located. However, this guy, we might end up uh, feeding it so that it can flower, um, you know, and, and grow a little healthy. These leaves are sagging a little bit. Um, I feel like I may be underwatering it. And this is the tricky part about orchids is that they prefer to um, have the right amount of water. Overwatering this plant can, is an easy way to kill it. So um, I'm gonna slightly adjust my watering method and add a little bit more water when I do water uh, because the leaves look a little bit droopy. Another thing, they don't like direct sunlight. And as you can see, it's in the window. Now this side of the apartment is definitely the, um, uh, the, the side that gets the least sun and the most indirect sun. However, I still think the windowsill might be a little too harsh for it. I know it was for our other orchid in our guest room, which we'll get to in a little bit. I'll talk to you a little bit about the problems we ran into that and why we had to definitely move it from the windowsill. So guys, this is our entry hallway here. I've got the light on above me. Um, if I turn it off, turn them off, 
you'll see it gets quite a bit dark. And actually we have the guest room door opening, which has light leaking out into the hallway. So it's even brighter than it would be if that door were closed. Um, and then much brighter than if the door were closed and we had the blinds down. So you can imagine in the evenings how dark it gets uh, in this hallway and succulents, even though they, they survive in harsh conditions, those conditions are still very particular. So they're meant to be in uh, l deserts, right? So deserts have a lot of sun, long periods of drought, and then heavy rains, right? So that's why they like to be watered thoroughly after that long drought period and they love to get lots and lots of sun. That's the environment they've adapted to. So that's why they've been moved to the window. As you can see, our shelves are empty now um, because they're on the windowsills, but typically they're beautiful and lush and decorated by um, our succulents. And they're really amazing way to um, decorate the space and purify the air in your, um, in your apartment. Here we have our snake plants, another air purifier. Um, another one that likes to be dried out and uh, not overwatered. So I'm just gonna check. Uh, they say it's good to stick your finger in about an inch and see if the um, soil is dry about an inch down and then you can water. I can still wait for maybe a day before I water that guy again. And that guy's still moist. So we're in great shape here. Um, this is why you get succulents. You don't need to water them every day. Um, you just check on them, you keep an eye on them, um, and you water them as they, need, as they need it. And that's literally it, it. And between that time, your house is looking beautiful. Moving on to the guest bed. All right, so this guy is by far the most problematic plant we have in our home. It's a majesty palm and it's beautiful. It's sprawling, it's bouncy. Um, and for the most part, it is green. However, uh, we've got some leaves in the back of it here that are brown and drying out and the tips of almost every single leaf uh, is brown and dried out. Um, this is uh, due most likely to a lack of humidity. This is the most tropical plant we have in here. Uh, it needs the most attention. So it needs light, it needs water constantly, it needs to be moist all the time and it needs high humidity. I've got a little mini humidifier here. Even cranking this thing 24 seven, it's not the humidity it really needs. We missed it regularly. I just missed it before I started this video. It's already seemingly absorbed um, all the moisture. So it needs the most attention. Um, and quite honestly, because of that, it's probably likely not in the most optimal space in our home. Like I said, it's in a guest bedroom and we don't always have access to come in here and water it um, or tend to it however you may need. I'm working on figuring out how best to care for this guy. Um, and I think that starts it moving to another space in the apartment. But first we need to figure out what plants to replace it with. I believe we're gonna put another snake plant here because uh, it goes straight up. As you can see, this is in a corner and some of its uh, leaves um, aren't getting sun and they're also, um, being kind of squished in the corner. So these snake plants, they grow kind of straight up and I think this is a great spot for it. So over here in this corner, we have our other orchid. There is one leaf on here that's like almost pretty much just straight yellow. And I looked into it um, and seemingly it's because it's getting way too direct sunlight. So I moved it to the corner here from this window so. So I'm hoping that helps with um, the leaves going back to a green state. Um, and again, this actually still feels moist. Uh, so um, I think I watered this one properly the last time I watered it. Um, unlike the other one, which I feel is a little dry just a couple days after watering. That's the case with the orchids, all right guys? Remember, um, no indirect sunlight, don't overwater, but don't underwater. Um, and that's pretty much about, uh, about it. You could feed them if you like during blooming season, um, but you don't have to. Um, I intend to, uh, just so I could, uh, we can maximize uh, the plant so we can get the best bloom out of it. That's it for the orchid. Let's move on to uh, the succulent, succulent, succulents in here and the house plants. All right, so we have two hanging plants here in, in hanging pots. 
Um, I'm tall enough to just stick my finger in and see uh, what the soil feels like. Uh, Danielle has to get a step stool. Um, these aren't obviously the most convenient plants to have, but they're, they add an amazing aesthetic, hanging plants. Um, they hang down, they're beautiful, and uh, like I said, it elevates uh, the aesthetics of the room, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> uh, this guy, uh, the name escapes me, but uh, indirect sunlight, keep moist, and I actually forget whether it needs to be misted or not. I feel like it's a regular humidity uh, plant, so it doesn't need misting, because um, I definitely haven't missed this in quite a bit. I know I started to initially, but I believe I read that it doesn't need it. Uh, and that is a fern. I think, I believe it's a Boston fern. Um, I love ferns, and I, that is not a pun. I, I promise you, I just think they're beautiful plants. That's, that's it, um, but I love them. And uh, I wish that one was a little bit bigger, a little bit more sprawly. We bought it like that. It's not gonna get bigger unless we either feed it or repot it into a bigger pot or both. Um, so I think that's pretty much as big as it's gonna get. Uh, so we have to consider putting it in a bigger pot like this guy is um, and also giving it some feed, some nutrients so it can grow. Water, uh, no indirect light, um, keep moist. Do not let that guy dry out and you don't need to um, missed it. Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't need high humidity. More succulents and they're hanging, baby. Uh, these guys we love. We got them from Target. They're amazing. A little bit expensive. You know, I think I'm gonna have to make a whole entire video about how ridiculously expensive Target got. Like Target came, went from being, man, I can't believe this stuff is so cheap to, man, I don't know if I can afford a shop here anymore. <laughs> so, um, we got these and we love them. We hang them, um, we hung them um, uh, to offset each other. Uh, and we think it looks great. Uh, two succulents, one each. And uh, this one's actually been growing like a beast. Uh, this one was a lot smaller when we got it, but it was in a smaller pot. So obviously we pot it into something bigger. So that allows the roots to grow and, and, and the plant to get bigger. Um, and we get compliments on this um, from our guests. Uh, you know, I think it's a great, great aesthetic and fortunately they've thought so too. We've just got one plant left in our guest room and it happens to be a mini snake, snake plant. Check it out. So here it is guys, um, our mini snake plant. As you can tell, we love these. Uh, these are some of the best air purifiers in the house and we just personally believe they're beautiful plants. And again, of course, easy to maintain. Allow it to dry out, water it when it does. All right guys, that's it for the plant section. Let's get into my video setup just a little bit uh, for the event tonight. And I'll tell you a little bit about what the event is if I haven't already. So the first thing I do is make sure my memory cards are empty. So I unload it onto my hard drive and make sure these are clear. And then I make sure all the batteries for my cameras are charged and I've got the right lenses ready to go. Tonight, I'm gonna to be working mostly with wide lenses because I'm gonna be capturing a bigger space with a lot of people. And we're gonna go with as low light as possible. So this is the perfect lens for it. Um, it's a wide angle, goes up to um, 11, goes down to 11 millimeter um, or up. And also it's low light. So it's 2.8 um, aperture. Um, and then I'm gonna be taking the Sony as well, which I'm recording on now charging those batteries, and I'm going to be using the lens I have on there right now, which is the widest angle I have for it, and also the lowest wide angle lens, aperture lens that I have, which is 4.0. Not the most ideal, but it'll get the job done, especially if um, I bring an LED down, which I'm pretty sure I plan to. I also get my tripods ready and rocking and rolling, make sure my um, quick release um, plates are where they belong. Um, makes the night go easier and it makes knowing where your tripods are uh, very beneficial for when you're getting ready to get out of here and get rolling. Uh, we're not going to be on tripods all night. One of the cameras is actually going to spend most of the time on the gimbal um, or stabilizer if you want to call it. We have the Zhiyun Crane V2 um, and make sure those batteries are charged, which they are, and then also set it up once I'm done filming on this camera. 
um, for, the, for the day. So I'm ready to walk out the door um, and head to the event and start filming on the crane. And then um, Jen Danielle will start out with a tripod properly, getting more ambiance. I'm gonna be more uh, getting action shots um, on the crane. So that's how it's gonna work. Um, and I think that's it for my setup. Uh, I've been working on it all morning. Not all morning. I've been working on it for like 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, but luckily, uh, we typically keep our batteries charged. We typically keep our cards relatively um, free of data after we shoot. We usually uh, are pretty good about unloading them. So there wasn't too much to unload or prep. It's just making sure that I knew where everything was and I know what I'm going to be bringing down with me tonight because um, preparation makes everything just that much easier. All right, so that's it for my plants and um, my setup for the event tonight. Now about the event. So I live in a uh, brand new building. It was built last year or maybe the year before um, and opened up last September. We moved in um, and we've been here for a year and change. We recently moved to a new apartment, uh, which we just had the housewarming for, if I had not mentioned early in the video, uh, and we will be doing an apartment walkthrough. We do have an apartment walkthrough available for our previous apartment in this building. Uh, it'll be in the description somewhere on this video, um, if you're watching on YouTube especially, um, maybe not if you're watching on Instagram. Um, but yeah, the property managers are putting on an event to, um, you know, work a better uh, relationship with between the tenants and also management. Uh, Carlos Almendares, he's with Grid Management, and he's been incredible uh, servicing um, uh, all of our needs basically. And I, um, I think they're going a step beyond that to um, really show a face uh, to the community here and know that you know they're here for us and they want to make this into a thriving community here in downtown Lynn in an amazing apartment building. Um, uh, speaking of the apartment building, it's called The Vault. Um, it's modeled after a bank because it used to be one. Um, our mailroom literally is an old vault and they've got another one, um, vault that is, inside of the restaurant that we have downstairs, which is where the event will take place. Um, so look out for that. Uh, we will be making a video of the event and also parts of the event video will be featured in an ad that we're working on for the vault apartments. That's it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, starting my day with me. Uh, it's 1020 and I've got to get ready for the rest of my day. I got a couple of castings that I have to submit for and some other random crap. I just gotta get done. So, holla. <laughs>